Hey everyone, Steve Patterson here from Photoshop Essentials. In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to open multiple images as layers into a Photoshop document, and how to add more images to the document as you need them. We'll also look at a few options in Photoshop's preferences that make placing images into your document even faster. And at the end, I'll show you the steps I used to blend my images into this double exposure effect. I'm using Photoshop CC 2020, but any recent version will work. If you like these videos, be sure to subscribe, and let's get started! We'll start by learning how to open multiple images as layers into a document. For that, we use a command called load files into stack. And not only does this command load your files, but it also creates the document for you. Here's how to use it. Go up to the file menu in the menu bar, choose scripts, and then choose load files into stack. Then in the Load Layers dialog box, set the Use option to either Files or Folder. Files lets you select images from within a folder, while Folder will open every image in the folder you select. I'll choose Files. Then click the Browse button. Navigate to the folder that holds your images and choose the ones you need. I'll select all three images in the folder. And notice the names of my images. We have Portrait, Sunset, and Texture. Photoshop will use these names when naming the layers, so it's a good idea to rename your files first. Then with your images selected, click Open. And the names of your files appear in the list. If you selected a file by mistake, click on its name to highlight it, and then click Remove. Leave the two options at the bottom of the dialog box, attempt to automatically align source images, and Create Smart Object After Loading Layers unchecked, and then click OK to load your images. Photoshop creates a new document, and after a few seconds, the images are placed into it. In the Layers panel, each image appears on its own layer, and each layer is named after the name of the file. You can turn layers on or off to view your images by clicking the visibility icons. And that's how to open multiple images into your document. Next, let's learn how to add more images to the document. And for that, we use a different command called Place Embedded. In the Layers panel, I'll delete my portrait layer by dragging it down onto the trash bin. To add a new image to the document, go up to the File menu and choose Place Embedded. There's also a similar command called Place Linked, which will simply link to the file on your computer. But to load the image directly into your document, choose Place Embedded. Select the image you want to add. I'll choose my portrait image. And then click Place. Now before Photoshop places the image, it first opens the Free Transform command, so you can resize the image if needed. But in most cases, you can just accept the current size and close Free Transform by clicking the check mark in the Options bar. You can also press the Enter key or the Return key on a Mac. And Photoshop places the image in the document. But notice in the Layers panel that the image appears not as a normal layer, but as a smart object, indicated by the icon in the lower right of the thumbnail. Now, smart objects are very powerful, and I cover how to use them in other videos, but they also have limitations, and the biggest one is that a smart object is not directly editable. For example, I'll select the rectangular marquee tool from the toolbar, and then I'll drag a selection around the woman's eyes. I'll invert the selection by going up to the Select menu and choosing Inverse. And then I'll delete everything around my initial selection by pressing the Backspace key or the Delete key on a Mac. But instead of deleting the area, Photoshop displays a warning that it could not complete my request because the Smart Object is not directly editable. I'll click OK to close it. So, depending on what you'll be doing with the image, a smart object may not be what you want. In that case, you'll need to convert the smart object into a normal layer after you've placed it into your document. To do that, in the Layers panel, right-click or Control-click on a Mac in the empty gray area beside the smart object's name, and then choose Rasterize Layer from the menu. And now if I press the Backspace key or the Delete key on a Mac, this time, Photoshop deletes the selected area as expected. I'll undo that by going up to the Edit menu 
and choosing Undo Clear. And then I'll remove my selection outline by going to the Select menu and choosing Deselect. So now that we know how to place an image into a document, let's look at a few options in Photoshop's preferences that can help you place images even faster. To open the preferences on a Windows PC, go up to the Edit menu. On a Mac, go up to the Photoshop menu. From there, choose Preferences, and then General. To prevent Photoshop from opening the free transform command every time you place an image, turn on Skip Transform when placing. To stop Photoshop from converting your images into smart objects, turn off Always Create Smart Objects when placing. And this third option won't speed things up, but it's definitely worth knowing about. If you place an image into a document and the image is larger than the canvas size, Photoshop will automatically resize the image to fit the canvas. In other words, it will make your image smaller. If that's not what you want, and you would rather keep the image at its original size, then turn off Resize Image During Place. To save your changes, click OK to close the dialog box. So at this point, we've covered everything we set out to learn. We know how to load multiple images as layers using the load files into stack command, and how to add more images using the place embedded command. I'll finish off this video by blending my images into a double exposure effect. To create the effect, I need to keep the white areas of my portrait and have my other two images appearing in the darker areas of the woman's face. So in the Layers panel, I'll click on my Sunset layer and I'll drag it above the portrait layer. Then to blend the portrait image and the sunset image together, I'll change the blend mode of the sunset layer from Normal to Screen. Next, I'll click on my Texture layer and I'll drag it up above the other two layers. Then to hide the dark areas of the texture and keep only the lighter areas, I'll again change the blend mode to screen. I'll also fade the texture by lowering the layer's opacity. Finally, I'll merge all three of my layers onto a new layer. On a Windows PC, I'll press Shift, Control, Alt, and E. And on a Mac, I would press Shift, Command, Option, and E. And then, to add a bit more contrast, I'll go up to the Image menu, and I'll choose Auto Contrast. And there we have it. That's a simple way to create a double exposure effect in Photoshop. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. Visit my website, photoshopessentials.com, where you'll find hundreds of Photoshop tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm Steve Patterson from photoshopessentials.com.